this week's installment, I'll be discussing how to prepare for a live gig. So think of this video as a guitarist guide to playing live. I'll be going over how I prepare, what I bring to the gig, and I've got tips for during the performance and for after. So stick around, this is one video you don't want to miss. is Damian Bachi and welcome to my back room here in sunny Tampa Bay, Florida. Now one of the cool things about this video is that it's just not for guitarists that are new to gigging because there's bound to be something in this video that even the most seasoned gigging veteran may have overlooked. Now it doesn't matter if I'm playing a festival gig, a music venue, or a club, or just a regular bar gig. I always want to be ready and prepared for the show. Okay, so first, whether it's a week away or the day of the gig, I want to know the songs that I'm playing like the back of my hand. I want to know the set inside and out, so what I like to do is practice the set over and over again. And if you're playing in a band situation, you want to also practice the song standing up. Because at the gig, that's what you'll be doing, standing. So you want to be comfortable playing that way. And this is very important, actually, if you're newer to gigging because it's a bit different playing standing up than it is playing sitting down. And also, what I like to do is walk around the house while I'm practicing. I always like to have some stage presence, so walking around the house while I'm practicing really helps me get comfortable. And sometimes what I like to do, even though it sounds silly, is I'll practice some killer rock positions. And since I'm practicing the positions beforehand, I'll know that I'll be able to pull them off live because I've already got it down here in the house. Now friends, once again though, I really gotta stress the importance of knowing the set like the back of your hand. It is key and essential to a great performance. And it's important for me to know the songs because I'm playing lead, rhythm, I'm mostly doing vocals. That's a lot of stuff. And there's times that I play like three sets. So I need to know this stuff. And practicing at home is how I get it done. Sometimes I'll practice the set two or three times. Whatever I need to do to get the job done, I'll do it. Now for my second tip, I want you to make sure that your guitar or guitars are gig ready. And basically before each show ahead of time, I'll make sure that the guitars that I'm bringing have no problems and they're ready to go. I'll make sure that the strings are in good condition, that they're fairly new. I don't want to be bringing some rusty strings onto the stage. I don't want to break strings in like the first or second song during a killer solo. That's not something that I'd look forward to. <laughs> I also like to take a look at my input jack and make sure that's not loose. And I just want to make sure that everything's in working order. You don't want to be on stage with a loose jack or a bad connection. I've been there, done that. It's not a good situation but it's easily avoidable by just giving it a quick once over before the gig. And since I own a lot of older guitars, I like to make sure that my pickup selector and my volume and tone knobs are all working and that there isn't any crackling. And especially for me here in Florida, with all this humidity, it creates oxidation. And I also get dust and dirt in it over time. So if I do encounter any problems, I can usually solve the crackling by just using some Deoxit D5. Also, this sounds like a no-brainer, but you want to make sure you have a working guitar cable. If your cable is a bit unreliable at home or at practice, then don't expect that you're going to get through a gig with it. Because, you know what? You're not. Now friends, let me tell you how unprepared I was at the ages of 18 through 21 in the early 90s while I was gigging. 
It's actually pretty embarrassing, but I learned my lesson the hard way, unfortunately. But that's why we're watching this video so you won't make the same mistakes that I went through. Which leads me to my next tip, things that you should be bringing to the gig. Like what things are in your gig bag, or in my case, what things are in my gig case. But before we talk about that, let's talk about guitars. Now I know there's guitar players out there that bring a few different guitars to their gigs. Now it's probably because they're either playing different styles of music or they're looking to get some different tones or sounds. But for me, I like to use usually just one guitar for the entirety of the gig. But I always do bring a backup because you never know when you may need it. Things can go wrong at any time during a gig. And friends, a guitar that isn't working while you're on stage puts you in a very bad situation. And even if it's something as simple as just breaking a string, let's say hypothetically I'm playing a guitar with a Bigsby on it and I break a string. Well, let me tell you a little secret. I'm notoriously slow at changing strings on a guitar with a Bigsby on it. But if I had a second guitar on hand as a backup, I can just put the one guitar down and grab the other guitar and I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm rocking and rolling. Oh no, I just popped the high E string. Ah, I only brought one guitar to the gig. I only own one guitar and that's all I brought. So I broke a string. Now, what do I do, Damien? Well, that's a very good question, hat and sunglass wearing Damien. And remember friends, there's no stupid questions here. So let's talk about what to bring to the gig and what should be in your gig bag. Now to answer your question, baseball hat wearing Damien, I always bring an extra set of strings. I usually have about two sets of extra strings. And that's a very important thing to bring because if you play gigs often, you know that every once in a while you are bound to break a string. It's going to happen. So it's extremely important to bring an extra set, at least one extra set of strings with you at each gig, especially if you only have one guitar with you. Also, you want to make sure you do not forget your handy dandy tuner. I've got the Snark here. I love it. Most of you probably use Snarks. Um, so handy. I dig them. I also bring extra guitar picks with me and an extra strap. Now I find these next two things that I'm going to mention to bring very important. You want to have a power strip with you and bring an extension cord with you. Now I mention this because I remember very well this happened many times. We'd be on tour, be on the road and we hit the stage and we're setting up and I find that the outlet is way over there. My amp's going here. There's no other room for it to go. It's going here, but the outlet is way over there, like 30 feet away. But when I have an extension cord, no problem. I've got that covered. And here's why having the power strip is great because there's been so many instances where I go to plug into the outlet and you know, it's already full. The drummer's got his little fan in there. The bass rig's plugged in there. Oh, there's some other random stuff plugged in there. No room for me. Hello, who's going to help me? You know no one's going to help you. Nobody cares. You're on your own. <laughs> Mr. Soundman, help me. Guys in the band, help me. No, you know, you got to figure these things out. So I got my power strip. I'm good to go. I plug that in, put all their cords in here, the power cords in there. I got mine in there. I'm ready to go. Now I'm playing the gig and I'm rocking and rolling. So those two things are pretty high on my to bring list. You know, for a while now, I haven't needed to like use anything like that. But you know, the day that you don't bring the extension cord or the power strip is the gig where you're gonna have, you're gonna be scratching your head. But you know what, you can alleviate that problem by bringing those two things. Now also in my gig case, I like to bring some basic guitar tools with me. Things like wire cutters, needle nose pliers, Allen keys, anything that I would need to get myself out of a quick pinch. I also bring two extra guitar cables. You always want to make sure you have at least one backup extra guitar cable. And I also bring some extra random stuff like batteries. I bring a pen and paper in case I have to make some, you know, last minute set changes or a reminder. I'll write it right next to the song. You know, you solo first. Remember that dummy. <laughs> and I also bring spare tubes for my tube amp if I'm using a tube amp for the gig. 
Now this one you really want to have if you're on a tour. When I was touring, I always made sure I brought extra tubes. But for a local gig, you know, if the tubes are new, maybe you don't need to bring the spares, but it's something to keep in mind to bring. And if you have them, bring them, because you never know what's gonna happen at a gig. And friends, now that I'm 49 years old, I like to have my load-ins go as smoothly as possible. That goes for the load-in and for the load-out. And I also like to bring as less things as possible. But back to the load-ins being easy. Well, you know how I can achieve that? By having this handy dandy hand truck. It's a freaking lifesaver. You put your amp on it or whatever you want to put on it and you're good to go. Man, I love this thing. Oh, and also before I forget, don't forget to bring your guitar stand. I know people have done it. I've done it in the past, but you know what? I should have had a checklist. Checklist of everything that I need to bring. You know what? Because if I had a checklist, I wouldn't have forgotten the guitar stand. So do yourself a favor and get yourself a checklist of everything that you need and check it off as you go and you're good to go. I keep saying that a lot, good to go. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so now we're at the gig and you've arrived on time. Actually, scratch that. You are now at the gig and you have arrived early. Because friends, you never know how the parking situation is gonna go at some of these gigs. And also, you wanna get there early because if it's a venue that you've never played before, you're checking out the stage and there's something goofy or just not right, this way you've got some time to troubleshoot and figure out how this is all gonna work out. Okay, so moving on, you're there at the gig and you're saying hi to everyone, you're being friendly, and now you're setting up your gear and you're getting yourself ready and then you're gonna put your set list somewhere that you can see it. And you wanna make sure that the whole band has the set list as well. Hopefully you've prearranged that where somebody in the band is printing out set lists for everybody or you've all made your own set list, but you wanna have a set list it's so important that the whole band has a set list so you're not calling out songs or no one's confused about what song you're going to play. Having a set list right there for everyone is very important because you're a band and you want everybody to be on the same page. And now you're finally ready to play the gig. You're starting on time, right? Yes, you're starting on time because you got there early. So you're starting on time and that's awesome because you want to be punctual. Now I understand that life's complicated and life sometimes just happens. And maybe a band member is late. That can happen, right? That sure has happened to you before. Maybe you were the one that's late, but these things do happen. But that's why I say it's so important to get to the gig early because if something is gonna happen, well, maybe now you're gonna end up on time or just a few minutes late and no one's gonna notice. Let me give you an example of a situation where somebody was late in the band and what happened. About 10 years ago, my band was playing a really hot spot in downtown St. Petersburg, Florida. The place is happening. It has a built-in crowd. The people go crazy for live music. It's a really cool spot downtown, hip, and they pay very well. They've got a very cool stage. It's just a great gig, and it could have been a continuous gig for the band. Now, I'm not gonna call the person out. I'm not gonna say it was, if it was the drummer or bass player, but I'm just gonna say that the person was late, like really late, like, man, I don't know, like at least the minimum of a half hour late. And let me tell you, it was again, our first time ever playing there. The management did not take kindly to our member of the band showing up late. Um, they start on time. They, the gig starts at eight o'clock at this place. Man, they want you starting at eight. And we blew it. Now, when the band member did finally get there, we played immediately. We played extra amount of time. We had a rocking show. I mean, I tried to pull out all the bells and whistles. I tried to make the show just, you know, as rad as possible. And I thought that maybe win over the management and be like, ah, oh, that's okay. These guys were so good. You know, it doesn't matter. They were a little late, kind of, you know. Well, it did matter. And you know, we never were hired back. We weren't asked to come back, nothing. And it was a great gig, man. It was a great gig. I love those built-in audiences, you know? Oh, people that like to see live music, you know? Gotta love that. But you know what? Because we were late, we lost it. So the moral of that story is start on time because you never know when that's gonna really count. And you should be starting on time regardless. The venue has hired you or asked you to play there. So you wanna start on time. 
your friends, there's an audience, people have come, they put their time on hold to come see you play, you gotta give them a show. You're starting at eight, you start at eight. All right, so enough of that sob story because you know what? You've started on time. You got to the gig early. You brought everything you needed, all your backups, all the things that you need to have in your gig bag, and now you're playing the show. So relax and enjoy playing live. It's such a great feeling, right? But now, friends, there's a couple of final things that I'd just like to go over with you. The one thing you want to do after the gig is wipe down your guitar. You want to get all that sweat, beard, dirt, grime off of it. Now friends, if there's a band that's playing directly after your set, you want to make sure you get your stuff packed up and out of the way in a fast manner. You definitely don't want to be that inconsiderate guy that's lollygagging, that's taking your time. You may be walking to the front of the stage, taking your thank yous from everyone. Thank you, I know I'm so great. Oh, I know. Thank you for coming, you rock. No, get your stuff out of the way. You got another band that's up after you. Be considerate. And if there is other bands playing after you, don't be that guy and take off, you leave. Don't be that person at all. I'll find you. <laughs> no, you want to stay there. You want to watch the other bands performing. But you know what? Why would you leave? Because you know, I'll tell you, some of the best music I've ever seen is not from being at a concert venue seeing like rock stars. Some of the best music I've ever seen performed is local music played at like a local dive bar. That's some of the best music I've ever seen. So yeah, when you're finished, be courteous, stick around, watch the other bands, stay to the end of the show. You get the idea. But let's say you're the only band that played that night, so you're walking off stage, you finish the gig, and you're walking off, and as you're walking through the audience, you wanna thank people for showing up. And you always wanna be sure to be kind to the wait staff or to the bartenders. And if there happens to be someone who's running sound, you wanna thank them also. Be sure to be courteous and have your stuff packed up and loaded out at a decent time. I guess what I'm trying to say is don't be that person that has employees waiting on you to get your stuff packed so they can go home. I've seen this over and over many times, even in my own bands. I'd have to say to some of the members, hey, it's getting pretty late. Do you want to maybe pack up your stuff? Um, you know, if there's closing time soon. But it sounds crazy, but it happens and uh, don't be like that. And now for my final piece of advice. Before you leave, as you're ready to walk out, make sure you double check the stage. Just make sure that you didn't leave anything behind. Because one thing that I've left behind in the past, which really annoys me, and I've left this behind so many times, it's ridiculous, is my guitar stands. Oh my gosh. Apparently, I just love leaving those behind. <laughs> and one thing that I probably did at least once on every tour back in the day was leave a guitar stand behind and it probably happened in a rural area where I couldn't get to maybe a guitar shop to replace that. There wasn't any music stores maybe available or open where we were and I'd have to go without it for maybe a week or a couple of days and that was just uh, that bummed me out. <laughs> so don't be like me in the past and leave your guitar stand there. Um, Man, I've, I've left so many. I mean, I must have done it at least, oh, I'm not even gonna, I'm embarrassed how many times I've done that. So don't be like me and don't leave your guitar stand behind. Remember, check that stage, double check. Well, alrighty, and hot dang duty, that's about all I've got for these suggestions and tips. Now, I've said a lot, but I know I've probably missed something, maybe even something obvious. So if I've missed something that's important or you have some great tips also, please definitely leave them in the comment section. You know, we can all learn from each other. And this YouTube community on this channel is really awesome. So I'm positive that I'll see some great advice in the comments section. Now gang, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you really dug some of those licks that I was playing in that live footage at the beginning of this video, well, I just wanted to let you know that I have two great full-length courses on rockabilly guitar and on jump blues guitar that are available at my website at damianbocci.com. All of the lessons come with PDF file guitar tabs and backing tracks. And you can purchase these courses as a DVD or as a download. These courses, friends, will not disappoint. And now, friends, I'd like to leave you with some inspiring words. If we take a good look around us, we'll notice that everything is always changing. 
For instance, the Earth is always evolving, adapting, enhancing, and refining itself. So friends, we must keep evolving also. Life is too boring to be the same person all the time. And remember, just like the Earth, you weren't put on this planet to stay stagnant. So keep on evolving and keep on growing. And with that, friends, I'm going to say goodbye to you. Much love to you all. Stay safe. And I'll see you soon in another guitar video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.